Hello, my name is Ken Getz. I'm a senior consultant with MCW Technologies. In this presentation, you'll learn how to use Excel 2007 functions from within Access 2007. There are lots of times you want to perform statistical or other types of calculations that Access just doesn't have functions for, but Excel does. You can use automation from Access to call those Excel functions. In this demonstration, you'll learn how. I've loaded the sample database, use excelfunctions.actdb into Access 2007, and I've loaded the sample form. Here on the form, we're going to run some tests calling Excel functions, and we have two ways to do it. We can either write data directly into an Excel spreadsheet or pass arrays as parameters to the Excel functions. The second technique ought to be more efficient, but you won't really see the difference here in our sample. It's too small. We're starting up a copy of Excel and we send some data over and perform calculations using functions that are available in Excel but not in Access. There are a bunch of Excel functions listed here. For example, SUMSQ. It takes a list of values either in a range in an Excel spreadsheet or in a variant which contains an array, and it calculates the sum of the squares of the values in the range or the array. Now I did my work by writing data to Excel in a spreadsheet, I can do the same thing by filling an array or two and passing those values to Excel, and you'll see I get the exact same results. Let's look at the code to see how this is all working. In our code, we start by creating a variable which can refer to the Excel application object. And this can only work if you've gone to the Tools, References menu, and you've added a reference to the Excel object library. Without that, the code can't work. We'll start by creating a new instance of the Excel application object and storing it away in a variable called obj. Now, every time I run that code, I'm going to start up a new instance of the Excel application. It'll be invisible. You can set the visible property to true to see the instance. It'll be invisible for us. And unless we explicitly quit Excel when we're done, It'll stay in memory. It won't shut itself down. So make sure you do quit Excel when you're done. Here we start calling methods of the Excel application object, like proper or substitute. We also call other methods like median, fact to create a factorial, some analytical functions, each taking a list of numbers. Now we have following this a set of function calls which take either an array or two or a range of values in Excel. If we use arrays, this block of code gets run. Well, how does this code work? It calls the copy column to array method in this module. Given an array, well, it's actually a variant that can hold an array, a table in which to look in Access, and a column from which to get data in Access. If we look at the copy column to array method here, it does its work by creating a record set based on the table you specify, moving to the last and then back to the first rows to get an accurate record count, and then redimensioning our array from one to that record count. We'll loop through all the rows in the record set and for each one, copy a value into the array at the correct location, moving on to the next row. When we're done, we close the record set and return the number of rows we copied over. Now there is a get rows method of a record set in Access, but it actually is more complicated than doing it this way because it returns a two column array of values and you have to pick out the data you want. This way we just copy each item over individually into the array. We'll do that for each of the two columns we care about and then call functions, for example, sum x2 P, Y2, which takes two columns of values, two arrays of values, and for each item in each array, calculates the square of the item and adds it to the square of the item in the same row in the other array, giving us a sum of the squares of all the values in each of the rows of the array. And this ought to be very efficient. But of course, it's all done in memory, so there's no way to interact with the data in Excel once you're done. If you need to allow a user to look at or work with the data, you need to pass data into a range in Excel. We'll call the add method of the workbooks property of the Excel application object, 
and we'll get a reference to worksheet number one within that workbook. We call copy column to sheet, giving a reference to the sheet, the table we want to look in and access, the column we want to look in and access, and a column to place the data in in Excel. This procedure here creates a record set with just the column you care about from the table. It sets up a range in Excel, which is cell A1, for example, and then calls the copy from record set method of that range. Give it a record set, it will take all the data from the record set and put it into one or more columns in Excel. Since we only have one column in our record set, we get one column filled in in Excel. Copy from record set is the easiest way to get data from a record set into a range in Excel. Once we're done, we return back the number of rows we filled in by asking the range for its current region, which is all the contiguous cells that have data in them. Dot rows gives us a reference to the rows. Dot count gives us the number of rows. Back in our form, now that we've filled in those two columns with the same number of rows, so we use the same variable in each case, we set up a range, which is A1 through A7 in our case, I believe, B1 through B7 in our example, and now we call those same functions again, this time using ranges in Excel as opposed to arrays in memory. This technique ought to be a little less efficient since it's poking values into Excel, but in our example, you won't see any difference. Now, since we've modified the Excel workbook, we need to tell Excel that it doesn't need to bother saving the workbook. Of course, you might want to save your workbook. In our example, we don't. So we tell Excel that the saved property of the active workbook is true. It's already been saved. And we set our range variables each to nothing and Excel can shut itself down. It'll only happen though, if we call the quit method of Excel explicitly, and then set our object reference to nothing. That allows Excel to shut down when it's done performing our calculations. If you want to do the same sort of thing in your own applications, you can import this module and make sure you set a reference to the Excel type library here in this dialog box. Once you've done that, you can call any of the many Excel functions from within your Access application.